Hey, Dave the Butterfly Guy here. It's May in Minnesota. Mid-May is when we do our planting, getting those pollinating flowers planted and ready for uh, creating butterfly habitat for the summer. But not today. We're not planting flowers. We're gonna actually plant a sugar maple tree. And with me today to help with that is Austin Yantes. She is a research ecologist from the University of Minnesota. And Austin, why is it important to plant trees for a butterfly garden? Right, so when we're thinking about pollinator habitat, the first thing that comes to mind is flowers. But we also have to remember that trees can be important too. Many butterflies use trees as their host species, and then also trees can provide food in the form of flowers and sap. So when we're planting our sugar maple today, we're thinking about using it as a host species for eastern tiger swallowtails, as well as morning cloaks. And then also it'll provide sap for sap feeding butterfly species like the morning cloak, eastern commas, and the red admiral. Oh, I love red admirals. So I'm going to feed the red admiral sap from my maple tree. In 30 years, I'm going to tap it and make maple syrup for myself, but now it's all for the butterflies. All right. Thanks, Austin. Let's get to work. Let's go. All right, Austin. So we've got our sugar maple tree right here. It's a nice, maybe about 12 foot high tree. So what should be the next step? Well, the first step is we have to dig a hole. So you're going to want your hole to be at least as deep as the root bundle that's inside of the uh, pot that you bought your tree in. And then it's also important for the hole to be at least 1.5 times as wide as that root bundle, as the pot. Um, that'll give the tree roots some room to grow and get started. And then we have a really clayey soil here. So we've decided to add some rocks, maybe a little bit of compost into the hole, kind of to help water move through and to add some nutrients. All right, we've got our hole dug. Our next step is to take the maple tree out of the container it came in, which isn't easy, it's heavy. So we're gonna try and lift it up and then I'm gonna lift up and Austin's gonna uh, take the container off. So Austin, we got the root bundle out of the container, but it's important we loosen up the roots, right? Tell us why that's important. Yeah, so as you can see, since it's been in this container for a while, it's gotten really root bound. Um, the roots are completely formed into the shape of the pot, and that will make it hard for the tree to get established. It'll be hard for the roots to get out of these knots and grow into the soil. So the next step is going to be to loosen this up uh, and get it ready to be put into the hole. Can you just do that with your hands or? You can do it with your hands. If it's really tightly bound, don't be afraid to gently get in there with a shovel. Um, you don't want to be cutting the roots off, but don't be afraid to really rough them up a bit and get them loosened. Nice job, Oz. Seems like you're tearing apart at those roots, loosening them up, being a little aggressive, but not too aggressive. Yeah, I'm trying to not break the roots themselves but really try to get them out of the shape of the pot and into a place where they'll be able to grow into the ground. How's it going breaking up the roots? Well, it can be a hard task. These roots really take hold and so it's not easy getting them unloosened. All right, we're ready to drop the tree into the hole. So we've got it elevated a little bit so the base of the tree is above the ground. Why is that important, Austin? The thing you're looking for here is the root flare, which is this bulge near the base of the tree. You want to make sure that stays up above the ground, otherwise the tree won't be able to grow properly. So don't, don't bury this. All right, Austin, we got the tree in. We've got all the black dirt in. What's the next step? Now we're going to just pack the soil down a little bit. Again, make sure that root flare is left exposed so everything can grow properly. And then you might want to also consider adding some mulch around the tree to help it retain water while it's getting established. So we're just going to go ahead and pack it in with our feet. Ooh, you can see it's still pretty loose. That's why you got to pack it in there. All right, we've got the soil packed in. Our next step is to water it. You want to be really generous with the water. 
we're gonna pour five gallons of water here this first day and for the next couple days we'll probably put five water, uh, gallons of water on it so that's what I'm gonna do now So in this clay soil, it'll take a little while for that to filter down, but you can see it was a nice dousing and that should give the tree a chance to get some nutrients and water right from the get-go. So we've watered the tree. The last step is to throw some mulch around the base that keeps it nice and moist. So we'll work on securing some mulch, but that's all I have today. I want to thank Austin Yantis, our research ecologist from the University of Minnesota for helping us out today. Thank you, Austin. Yeah, it was super fun and it's always great to see people doing work like this in their own backyards, creating butterfly habitat. Happy to be here. <laughs> great. Thank you, Austin. That's all I got today. It's Dave the Butterfly Guy signing out. Have a great day.